Welcome back to the Forgotten City. As promised last time, we've got a couple uh, errands to run. So we just got our golden bow. There it is. And uh, anything that... There's our flashlight. A little bit less interesting. But um, yeah, anything that we want to turn into gold, that's going to let us do. So there's two things that we want to do. First of all, we want to check in with Equitia, the priestess. Now that the assassin has been cleared out from the bathhouse, we may be able to um, make some more progress in there because there was something that she wanted to show us. Also, we have uh, Rufius over there who has been suffering from rheumatism, and now we have the cure. So we'll first check in here and see what she has to say. Now, it might be challenging to figure out where she is. But one thing I really like about this uh, game is that these are, you know, living, breathing characters who go about the town. They don't just stand in one spot the whole time. Like, you, they might start out in their quarters in the, uh, the beginning of the day, but then they go to the tavern, or go uh, talk to the other people who they happen to know, or um, things of that nature. They, they actually go around from place to place. So... Uh, long story short, we should try to figure out where the priestess is. Are there any other, um, let's see. Oh, here we go. Maybe this will help us track her down. Sometimes we have to talk to somebody before the quest marker will kick in. Let's see if that, our theory checks out here. We'll do that. And then, well, no, actually. Um. Hmm. Well, it's possible that she could be in the baths already. So, is it possible that maybe we want to go ahead and explore? And at the very least, we'll get a better idea of what kind of um, layout we have. Oh, very nice. This is definitely a uh, patrician type bath. That's for sure. For the wealthy, the high class, the well to do. And so the uh, there are various uh, in most Roman baths. There were there were several rooms uh, of kind of alternating hot and cold uh, baths. Uh, so, for example, there was the Frigidarium, where you could get, uh, like, a cold water bath, and then there were, uh, you know, ones that were for steam, ones that were for scraping off, um, like, you would, they would, you would get oil applied, and then it would get scraped off of you by slaves, different, all kinds of things. Uh, let's just look around down here, see if there's anything interesting. Well, there's a lady down here, that's interesting. Uh, I guess we have to get out over here. Well, there's nothing that's uh, immediately of interest to us here that I could see other than just seeing kind of the uh, the natural beauty of this place. There's a ladder here, but a ladder to where? That's the question. Uh, okay, well, after doing a quick lap... I'm not seeing much unless there was like a way to get up top and uh, something there that might be important. But I think we, yeah, the the whispers are telling us that Aquidia, essentially, I'm assuming she's the she, uh, is going to guide us. So we'll go ahead and track her down wherever she may be. It's tough to know where anybody is at any given moment. I guess we'll we'll start out by um, checking some of the uh, the more common gathering spots. So I've seen people come here to the theater. Uh, let's see. Oh, is this? Oh, here she is. Hello. I was looking all over for you. A new face. Oh, babe. Yeah, we've we've met. Um, uh, here's the pattern. So it looks like each time we talk to her, because it is a new day, 
Uh, and it stands to reason we have to essentially repeat the clues to her. Mm, yes, Stranger on a riverbank. Memory lapses. Mentioning yeah. a river. Let me ask you this. And I'm a young woman. You... I see. And she was wearing a hood. Okay, and let's go to the baths. Too closely. We can't have people thinking we're bathing together. No, of course not. That would be uh, scandalous. Okay. Well, Don't I could just love springtime. Uh, yes. I mean, it's okay. I'm more of a fall person, but uh, you know, to each their own. Okay. Hopefully, this is a respectful distance, your your highness. Oh, we're going all the way in, huh? Okay, fair enough. Oh, we're going literally all the way to the back. Alright. What are we looking at? Talk to me. I knew the young woman you met by the river was wearing a hood. Here, look down at the bottom of the baths. It's a little hard to make out in this light. If only we could see. Oh, what a marvelous lamp. Hmm. Yep, but thanks. Do you see it? Somebody waking up by a river in a forest to find a hooded figure with a coin. I sure do. It's just as you described it. Only your pronunciation is a little off. The name you heard wasn't Karen. It was C H A R O N, yep. as in as in the boatman, Charon, the ferryman of the dead. Yeah, Charon, who in exchange for the right coin, helps the souls of the newly deceased cross the Styx, the river that separates the land of the living from the land of the dead. When I dragged you out of the river, I thought you were never going to wake up. Mm -hmm. I checked your pockets for ID, but all I found was some loose change. Oh, the coin. Feels like I've spent my whole life in a dead-end job with an endless commute. Oh my gosh, yeah. Sorry if I sounded cagey, it's just that I don't always get the best reactions when I introduce myself. <laughs> my name's Karen. I'm so sorry, my friend. Yep. I'm so, so sorry. I take it you know what this means. It means that I'm dead. This is the underworld, yeah. I'm afraid so. It's all starting to make sense. All these people, whose last memory was running from the fires toward the river. Oh boy. It seems none of them escaped with their lives after all. Perhaps we should be grateful they don't remember their final moments. It also tells us that the Golden Rule is the work of Pluto, the god of the underworld. And why his epithet has always been father of riches. I know it's a lot to take in, and you look as if you have questions. So, I'll try to answer them if I can. So that confirms my suspicion. If if any of you um, listened to the episode in which I I gave my theory a couple episodes back when we first found the theater, that was uh, that was exactly what I had thought. So are all of us dead? That was my first thought too. In the old stories, the underworld was where the souls of the deceased were taken, but it was also possible for the living to reach it without dying if they were particularly fearless. So, I'm afraid I don't know. Hmm. So we're not necessarily dead. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting you're not from here. If you were Roman, or even Greek, you would know these stories. Each of them is slightly different. Whether the storyteller was Plato, Homer, Virgil, or Ovid. Mm -hmm. But they always involve the souls of the dead, meeting a grim ferryman named Charon on the bank of a river. It was said that he'd help the new arrival cross only if they could pay him with a coin, an obol. That's why it was once our custom to bury our loved ones with a coin in their mouths. Charon's obol, we called it. Of course, an obol was a kind of Greek coin, because we inherited this knowledge from the Greeks. And I guess they ch that she took a form that was um, not what you were expecting, huh? To be fair, 
The ferryman isn't exactly as the poets described. And he, she, they, they seem to appear to different people in different guises. Uh -huh. You say you saw a young woman named Karen with a hood. And I once heard Kabash mention a stranger in a ram headdress named Kurti. And Rufius described meeting a stranger named Kamut Tabal wearing an eagle headdress. But whatever form this stranger took, they were always wearing a hood of some sort, and their name always began with a K sound. I suspect the only way you'll solve this riddle is if your paths cross again. Which seems pretty unlikely. Good question. Let's see. In the stories, Charon would always require a coin as payment for passage across the river. But that never made any sense to me. What does an ancient immortal being need with coins? In That's our true. case, it seems Charon didn't take the coins we had. He or she merely checked we had one in our pocket. Oh, if we died with a coin in our so, pocket. Maybe there's something special about the coins each of us had on us. That might explain why we wound up here, but so many others did not. Hmm. And was this a big secret? No. I mean, I had my suspicions, especially after Livia's ramblings, but I would never have figured it out without your help. I promise you. Okay, so what now? Now that we know where we are, we have to figure out what to do about it, if we don't want to be cast into gold for eternity. We don't have much to go on, except the old stories. I remember four in particular about heroes in the underworld. Hercules, the demigod and son of Jupiter. Orpheus, a Thracian poet. Mm -hmm. Sisyphus, a king of Ephyra. And Aeneas, a Trojan hero. Hercules was able to leave the underworld because he cowed its god with his strength. Sisyphus and Orpheus both relied on their wits instead. They persuaded the goddess of the underworld, Proserpina, to help them escape. And finally, Aeneas was able to escape with the help of a spirit guide, who led him through a secret gate. So hmm. it seems you have two options. To confront the god of the underworld head-on, or find a way to escape with the help of Proserpina or some other guide. And what about just up the shaft? It's a reasonable question, but the problem is, this place is fairly well designed to keep us here. There's no way to climb up the shaft. And even if you could build a ladder big enough, just trying it would break the golden rule. Oh, that's right, we heard you know about that, that. Thanks to the writings left behind by those who've tried. And you don't want to call out Pluto by name, huh? All Romans try to avoid saying it. And the reason is quite simple. He might hear us. You may refer to him as Pluto, if you wish, but you'll only be calling attention to yourself. Do so at your own peril. Okay, maybe we'll try to avoid that then. Pluto or Hades. Um, well, between the two, I would rather get somebody to help us escape. As I mentioned, both Orpheus and Sisyphus were said to have persuaded Proserpina to help them escape and Aeneas was guided to the exit. The problem is, those are the stories of a poet, a self-aggrandizing king, and a brawler about their own heroic deeds, so they should be taken with a grain of salt. First, Proserpina. What we do know about her is, well, it's a grim tale. It's said the god of the underworld abducted and dragged her here against her will, forcing her into marriage. Yeah, that's not a great situation. It is. The gods are a mirror image of mankind, as far as cruelty is concerned, I'm afraid. If the stories are true, I imagine she's as desperate to escape as we are. If she really did help Orpheus and Sisyphus, perhaps she'll help us, too. The problem is, how do we communicate with her without being noticed by her captor? Leaving that aside for a moment, there is also the possibility of a spirit guide. I don't suppose you've come across one of those in your travels? Well, maybe the um, statues. Yeah, I was about to say. Truly? And you're only bringing this up now? I mean, I've then been again, busy, you know? I suppose you were worried I'd think you were as mad as Navia. Can you tell me more? Is it the same voice? What 
kinds of thing does it say? It's always the same voice, and she's helpful, if a little cryptic. Fascinating. Perhaps she is a benevolent spirit. Or perhaps... Hmm. Perhaps you're hearing the voice of Proserpina herself. If she has indeed been abducted, it would make sense for her to speak in cryptic whispers to avoid detection. Tell me, has she told you anything that might lead you to the way out? Not really. Oh, I see. Well, let me know if you hear anything that might be a thread through this labyrinth. Okay. Uh, I guess the only other option is confronting him head on. Is everyone so blunt where you're from? Oh. Sorry. That option would be the boldest, but also the only way to learn the truth about the golden rule and maybe even put an end to it. Mm, true. As I said, Hercules managed to overpower the god of the underworld, but he was a demigod. Forgive my candor, but you are no Hercules. Hey, I mean, I guess you're right. Hercules could manipulate time or turn organic matter into gold. That's true. Are you telling me that you can? Yep. I won't pretend to understand exactly what that means, but if that's true, then perhaps you stand a chance. So, if you want to confront him, I'll help you as much as I can. Who knows? Perhaps your name will be uttered in the same sentence as Hercules one day. But first, you'd need an audience with you-know-who, and for that, you'll need to enter the great temple overlooking the city. The problem is, the door has been sealed shut for as long as I've lived here, and there doesn't even seem to be a keyhole. I suspect the answer lies in the desecrated obelisk in front of it. I'm not sure if you noticed, but there are four plaques missing from its base. It looks as though somebody, or a series of somebodies, forcibly removed them, and in doing so, dishonored and angered our Divine Keeper. If you could recover and replace all four of those missing plaques, I imagine he might be willing to receive an audience again. But what do these plaques look like? Are they like his name? It's the towering stone monument with four sides and a pyramid-shaped head that stands before the great temple. A dedication to the god of this place. You'll find them all over Rome, but of course they were looted from Egypt many years ago. It seems one of them made its way here too, although how is a mystery. However, this one is unusual in that each of the four sides is decorated in a different style. Hmm. Roman, Greek, Egyptian, and another I don't recognize. That means you'll need to recover four different plaques. Roman, Greek, Egyptian, and a fourth, a mystery plaque. Wow, okay. Um, just off of the top of my head, the mystery plaque, it could be another mythology. So it could be like Norse mythology. Could it be like Hindu? Could it be Christianity? Could it be like one of the other like cults out there that they've been talking about? Huh. Okay, well, what about the Roman one? Question. To answer that, we first need to ask who would have defaced the obelisk in the first place? It would have had the god's name engraved into it. So it may be that whoever desecrated it wanted that name to be forgotten. And there's only one group of people I know of who might want to do that. There's a cult in Rome that often argued there is only one true god. Theirs, of course. They've been known to start fires, as well as deface religious monuments whose existence challenged their beliefs. If I were you, I'd go looking for them. Of course, they've all been in hiding since the fire last year, so finding them won't be easy. Oh, I think I know how. But I did hear a rumor they have a secret shrine somewhere in the city. Behind the theater. Perhaps, if you could find that, you might be able to recover the Roman plaque. Leave it to me. Uh, okay, what about the Greek one? No. But perhaps you should begin your search with the local Greek fellow, Georgius. His store is in the forum. Okay, Egyptian. Perhaps Kabash, our Egyptian resident, will be able to tell us. I don't think we've met him. Unfortunately, he disappeared weeks ago. Oh, that but would I be why. Here, Aurelia is peddling rumors about him at the tavern. So, perhaps you could talk to her. 
or just take a look in his room. Hmm, okay, and then the mystery? I'm afraid you're on your own with that one. But perhaps the goddess will help guide you to it when the time is right. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, let's go. All right. I would suggest not discussing this with anyone. The best we can do for them is to let them remain oblivious for as long as possible. As for Livia, it seems she's been shouldering the weight of this terrible secret all this time. Yeah, that's fair. Perhaps it would comfort her to know she's not alone. We can check in on her. Um, which one should we do? I guess we'll go... We'll do the Roman one first because it said that Rufius has, uh, is a contact. In any case, time is of the and we have to go there anyway. The best begin. May Fortuna guide you. Thank you. Although you may not need her with Proserpina on your side. Well, that was quite the exposition dump. I don't know. At first, I was I, I tend to favor the more non-confrontational routes just because I think the diplomacy options. Yeah, thank you. You know what they say about big bows, big arrows. Uh, anyway, I tend to f favor the more um, non-confrontational route because it tends, I think, in my opinion, to be the more interesting than just straight fighting. But she did say that confronting. Um, Hades or Pluto head-on would actually end, had the potential at least, to end the curse. Which, I think, of the two, it would be better to do that and kind of free everybody than to just, you know, peace out on my own and um, leave everybody here to suffer. Well, at the very least, we do know that there's the secret, uh, whatchamacallit, the secret area back here that we couldn't get into before because we had no way to climb vines. But guess what? We've got a bow that is um, pretty much designed for that sort of thing. Alright, that's not it. Uh, where was it? Aha! This is the one. And let's get out the bow. Whoops. Thank you very much. Okay. Hey. Let's go. Come on. Maybe I have to put the flashlight away. All right, come on. Oh, there we go. We did it. All right. Let's, uh, I guess we could just hop down. And then... We can, uh, make sure we have a quick escape. Just in case we need it. Although I don't expect that we will. Hey, that looks like a plaque to me. Plaque bearing the Latin inscription, Pluto, Father of Riches. Yep, I'll take that. Thank you. A wooden carving, it's probably going to be the fish again. And, uh, let's put the bow away. We don't need to scare anybody. Uh oh. There we go. Alright. Hello, I'm here. What are you doing here? Please leave. Are you sure about that? I said, please leave. You're trespassing. Okay, fine, whatever. I thought you might want to talk about what's going on here, but. I see I'm not welcome. Come on. These vines are a little... A little hard to navigate. There we go. Oh, you just have to keep facing up. Alright, well, one of the plaques is down. <laughs> that was easy. Alright, did we already check up here? I don't think we can get in there. Alright, well, even though we have the plaque, I still say we pay Rufius a visit. Because, um... I think it would be helpful. 
I'm pretty sure this is how you get to the tavern, where we'll likely find him. Uh, is it? No, I don't remember. Oh, because we fulfilled our quest, so we need to put a new one in. Okay. Um, Herculean task, collect all four plaques. I think we want the thorn in the paw, right? Yeah, there we go. So, oh, he's back this way. Uh, there we go. This is what I was looking for. All right. What's up, Rufius? Oh, he's a good-looking guy. Look at him. Yeah, I know. Um, all right, about your rheumatism. Maybe he'll be a little bit nicer to us. What business is that of yours? Well, I figured out a treatment. Well, I didn't figure it out. Someone gave it to me. But anyway, eat a pinch of this willow bark, and you should feel better in no time. Willow bark. And this will work? Yep. Oh, thank God. Finally, some relief. This is what I've been praying for. Maybe God hasn't abandoned me after all. Thank you. Hey, it's my pleasure. I've been in a lot of pain lately. The rheumatism, these cursed statues always watching in the crisis of faith. It was too much. Started messing with my head. <sighs> this is exactly what I needed to set it straight again. I owe you one. No problem, buddy. Um, have we already gone through these with him? Let's do it, no, just in case. I don't. I did hear a rumor that Aurelia, the tavern keeper, has been offering to sell a way out. I barely have two sisters. Yeah, to but together. she's selling you poison. Trust me, you don't you don't want what she's offering. Hmm. I'll tell you this much: I hate the fact that my survival depends on the common sense of other people. Oh, <laughs> I know the feeling. I've lived through a pandemic. Topical. Oh, then you know what I'm talking about. I mean, all these people just bumble along like nothing's wrong. Well, we're one bad decision away from being wiped out. Like the last lot of people who lived here. Seems like I'm the only one ready for what's coming. Whatever that is. And when it hits, it's everyone for themselves. You've been warned. And can you be more specific? I don't know. But did you ever get the feeling some of these statues are watching us when we're not looking? I know they are. Like they're waiting for something. I don't like it. Mm, no, you're right. You're definitely right. That doesn't help me. Sorry. And, I mean, the vote doesn't matter quite as much, Meliolis. but... I'm not sure I trust Sentius. Couldn't even protect his daughter in a city without sin. How's he going to protect yeah, us? Yeah, everybody seems to be saying that. Uh, okay. Fine. What's next? Uh, I think that's it. See you around. Adios. Alright, well that one's done. So what do we have left? Uh, ask Maliolus whether he's Quinctius. That's good. Talk to Livia about being in the underworld. Oh, she's just right over here. Let's do that. You. Sisyphus, attack or pursue the stone that always returns. It, it does kind of feel like that sometimes, but anyway. Just as the ocean accepts the rivers of all the world, so this place accepts all the souls. But it does not notice the crowds that come. Yeah, I figured it out. I know where we are. Say it. Speak its name. The underworld. Then it is true. I was right. You sure were. I thought... I thought I saw it, but when the rest of them could not, I kept thinking I must have gone insane. No, they just didn't want it to be I true. I had to tell myself it was true over and over again. 
until I wasn't sure if I was deceiving myself. I, I must apologize if my words seem cryptic. I'd found comfort in reciting the Metamorphoses by our great poet Ovid. He gives such an uncanny description of this place. I, I cannot help but wonder if he himself came here. Would you like to hear it? I sure would. I will do my best to remember the relevant verse. There is a downward path, gloomy with fatal yew trees. It leads through dumb silence to the infernal regions. The sluggish Styx exhales vapor, and by that way, the shadows of the newly dead descend, entombed with full rites, and the ghosts of those, at last, given proper burial. The wide, thorny waste is cold and pallid, and the newly arrived shades are ignorant of the road that leads to the Stygian city, where Black Dis has his cruel palace. As the ocean accepts the rivers of all the world, so this place accepts all the souls, and is never too small for any populace, nor notices the crowds that come. There the bloodless shadows wander without flesh or bone. Some crowd the forum, some the house of the ruler of the depths. Others follow their trades, imitating their previous lives. And still others incur punishment. I hope I have done it justice, and now we share a secret. It's as if you've lifted a great burden from my shoulders. Thank you, friend. I think I should rest. It's probably for the best. Hmm. Wow. So that's that's crazy. Like thinking that you've been out of your mind this whole time, but really you have been spot on. Okay. Well, that one is done. Checking these off. Um, we could ask Dooley and Georges. We can do. The Egyptian plaque or the old man? I assume the old man is the one that's behind the uh, the Greek statue. The mystery one, who knows. Uh, Virgil's harassment. Ask Ulpius about Scintilla's disappearance. That we still have to do. Um, and we have to get 2,000 coin, basically, to activate that, From if I understand it correctly. Uh, let's see... Okay, so from here, why don't we head back to, let's take the zip line down, it's always a good time. And we'll go to that house and we can talk to that old guy who's Sorry. back, hey, what's up? Uh, talk to that old guy who wouldn't talk to us before because he said, well, do you know who the, um, oh, what did he say? He was like, do you know who the god is that, uh, is behind all of this? And before we were like, no, sorry, we don't. But now we do. Well, there's the collapsed temple. Um, what about, is this, this is the one, right? Pretty sure. And then we gotta go down here. And then we could probably sprint our way there. Oh, the game is saving for us. That's good. I keep remembering to needing. To be honest, I haven't really needed to auto save all that much, other than combat situations. Um, I thought maybe at first that it would need it would be a little bit more of a um, like a factor I'd have to consider in the game, but it hasn't really been the case. All right, old guy. Give me your secrets. There he is. Come and Hello. join me by the fire. Welcome, welcome. May I ask your name? You certainly may. It's a sincere pleasure to meet you. Tell me, what brings you all the way? We talked about this before. We've got a couple things to do. First of all, we're looking for the plaque that was removed from the obelisk. Ah, yes. That cursed thing. I know exactly where it is. And? I will tell you everything I know. But first, a request. 
I have been living down here alone for many years, with nobody to talk to but myself. The one thing I long for above all Yep, good philosophical I argument, I know. Is a good Let us find out with this simple question. Have you deduced the name of the god responsible for the good? Yes, it is Pluto, god of the underworld. Excellent. I see you are indeed quite astute. Very few come to that realization before their time in the sun is over. Now, will you join me in a friendly Socratic dialogue? I would love to. Sounds easy enough. Wonderful. Then let me begin with a question. Okay, would you ready. say you know the difference between right and wrong? Um That's complex. You are an overthinker too. We're the same then. It is probably why I became a philosopher. But if you struggle with right and wrong normally, then down here with the golden rule, surely your struggle can only have become more difficult. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's reassuring. And the truth is, you're not alone. You see, out there in the world, being uncertain about right and wrong was acceptable because our mistakes rarely had consequences. So we would tell lies and bend rules and turn a blind eye and rationalize and yet still find a way to think of ourselves as good people. But under the golden rule, morality matters. The slightest wrongdoing could result in a mass execution. So to navigate this maze, we would have to be certain about the difference between right and wrong. Wouldn't you agree? Well, yeah, whose version of right and wrong? That's a good question. That is an excellent question, and it leads directly to my next line of inquiry. So let me ask you this. Is there one system of morality which is always perfectly correct? which you could follow in every situation and always do the right thing. Mm. I mean, if we're talking about like a set of rules like never lie, then I would say no, because sometimes you have to lie. You know, like if somebody was being hunted down for genocide or something, I don't know, you would want to lie to the people to keep them safe. So I'm going to say no. Are you sure? Or is it possible that humans simply haven't figured out the right system yet? I mean, it's possible. Uh, I suppose we just haven't figured it out After yet. After hundreds of years, and as many great thinkers dedicating their lives to these questions, what hope do we have if our best and brightest haven't been able to answer them? Well, um, go on. My point is this. I don't think anyone alive truly knows any hard and fast rules about right and wrong. Um, do not kill. Yeah, but even do not kill, like in times of war or, I don't know, I'm sure there are some situations you could come up with where it might be justified. I think I can understand if what there he's is saying. one thing I have observed about rules, it is that virtuous people do not need them. And evil people will always find a way around them. That's a good point. And so we must accept our limitations and the sad truth that no human society will ever achieve the utopia for which it strives. In mathematics, we would call it an asymptote, a line that can be approached but never reached. Because the only way to create a utopia is with the ever-present threat of force, such as the golden rule. This and no other is the root from which a tyrant springs when he first appears as a protector. And life under tyranny is no utopia at all. Yeah, it's somewhat of a paradox, isn't it? Um, yeah, I agree. I'm glad to hear that. In any case, thank you for humoring an old man. I would be happy to answer your questions. Hmm, wow, that really makes us... It really makes you think about it. Um, let's get this guy's backstory. You mean, how did I end up living alone in this cave with nothing but these relics of the past for company? It's a long story. Go on. I was a quarrelsome young man. At 19, I left Corinth for Rome to study rhetoric at one of her finest academies, so I could argue more forcefully. Back then, I used to enjoy verbally sparring with everyone I could 
and I was good. One night I found myself in a tavern, in an argument with a drunk mercenary. It became heated, he drew a gladius, and I won the argument, but lost my life. I woke up on the banks of the Styx at a campfire opposite Karen. Of course, I tried to persuade her to let me return, but even with all my skill, I failed. I settled in, made friends, and learned what I could, quickly realizing our little community faced certain death under the Golden Rule. So I began looking for a place to hide underground. Fortunately, I found this place waiting for me. You see, I was not the first to take refuge here. I returned to my friends above, persuaded them to join me, and twelve of us descended for the last time to live out our days hidden from Hades' tyranny. Hmm. Uh, Hades being the Greek name for Pluto, of course. They are one and the same. The Romans call him Pluto. And long before that, my people called him Hades. And, um, you're happy down here? My generation was wiped out, turned to gold many years ago. My friends and I were able to avoid the same fate by hiding down here. I think it's safest to assume that if I was to return, Hades would realize that his furies hadn't finished the job, and he'd send them after me again. Hmm. That's interesting that, like, for a god, he can't see underground. That seems <laughs> like kind of an oversight, but anyway. Uh, you can't tell me your name, huh? I fear that if you were to utter my name in the city, even by mistake... Oh, true. Hades would hear you and know I am still alive. That's a good point. Okay. And everyone else was turned to gold, right? I'm afraid I am the only one left. There were 12 of us in the beginning. But one by one, my friends passed away. Some from malnutrition, others from madness and despair. It has been... Before my unexpected visit from Kabash some weeks ago, I'd not seen another person in many, many years. Hmm. And I don't see a lot of food and such. Living in darkness is not without its challenges. The first challenge is diet. Fortunately, I found that eating fresh fish provides most of the nutrients I need. And sometimes, when there are Greek people living up above, I surface at night and salvage the offerings they've left in the temple of Demeter. Oh, smart. The greater challenge is the isolation. So I like to imagine arguments where I argue both sides. But like so many things in life, arguments are better with a partner. That's true. Um, man, I feel bad for him, but he's also very smart to have kind of found the solution. As you wish. Um, do you want to escape? Or are you content? Huh. If I did, would I be living like this? Yeah, fair enough. I'm sure he has a take on the philosophy of the rule itself. Did we not discuss it at length already? Oh, I see. You're oh. toying with me. No, I guess he's already huh. said his piece. Uh, yeah, what about the plaque? You seek the plaque bearing the Egyptian inscription. I do. It is a cursed object, and I would be happy to give it to you if Kabash had not oh, already taken it. Of course. All right, well, then where is he? I will tell you, but you may find him hostile. To prepare for your encounter, there are certain things you must know. I'm ready. Very few know this, but before the Romans came to this city, it was once entirely Greek the architecture, the temples, and the people. When the Romans came, in typical fashion, they claimed it as their own, built over everything that could be built over, and renamed the things that could not. Thus, the shrine of Persephone became the shrine of Proserpina. And when they found an obelisk bearing the name Hades, they tore it off and replaced it with Pluto instead. And the city's dwindling Greek residents, witnessing this compulsive Roman conquest, decided to preserve what they could. They gathered their art and valuables, secreted them away through the Temple of Demeter, and hid them here, out of reach of the Romans. Hmm. Smart. Well, um, 
Kabash if he has the Egyptian one, because the Egyptians were here before the Greeks, right? So I'm, maybe they did something similar. However, there was one thing that always seemed out of place to me, and it is the very thing you seek. An even older plaque bearing an Egyptian inscription. Saying what? We had no idea until years later, when the first of my friends began to die. As a result of their deaths, we began to dig catacombs branching off from this cavern to lay them to rest. We extended the tunnel so far that we accidentally discovered another, an even older tunnel, which somebody had gone to hmm. great lengths to keep hidden. Oh, interesting. Suddenly it made sense why there was an out-of-place Egyptian plaque among our people's possessions. You see, we proud Greeks had thought the Romans beasts for stealing and corrupting our heritage. But it turns out this game has been going on much longer than any of us imagined. I think it is best you head through the catacombs and follow Kabash's trail. Where are the catacombs? There are certain things you must see for yourself. Okay. Take this key. You'll need it to open the gate. Fair enough. A rusty old key to the metal gate to the catacombs, which I have no idea where it is, but we'll find it. Uh... All right, I guess that's it then. I enjoyed our chat, but please keep my presence here a secret. Yes. Your secret's safe with me. Ha. Huh. Hanging fish. The nutrients in these fish must have helped the old man compensate for the lack of sunlight. Oh, the catacombs are down here. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, I say perfect spot to take a break what I don't understand about this whole situation is if this is the underworld the place where you go when you die then how can you die if you're already in the underworld because if this old man's like his 12 companions I guess 11 him being the 12th if they died then where is there to go in the afterlife other than the underworld I just something still doesn't add up to me um, anyway next time we're going to Go into the catacombs, see if we can find, uh, I guess, evidence of Egyptian presence here, or maybe get a little bit closer to the truth. Man, I, I, love, I love the mystery. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> oh, I'm really having fun with it. I hope you are, too. Thank you so much for watching, and I already can't wait for the next one. Until then, I'll see you.